Hallelujah, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Oh, wow, I'm excited tonight and I want to welcome you to a special edition of Prayerfully Building Stronger and Better Marriages. God has one plan for you and it is a stronger and a better marriage on a daily basis because the spirit of God is at work in us. And so the, like the scripture says, the path of the righteous is like the shining light that shines brighter and brighter until the full day dawn. So I welcome you here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not going to take much of your time because the uh, leaders are ready tonight and we're excited to have in our midst the host Glory be to God. The hosts of the radio program called The Marriage Experience. This takes place on heartsonglive.co.uk. I'll put that on the on the um on the chat for us. But I want to welcome us tonight um, to the presence of God because God is going to be using his servants. Oh, my captain, captain, I need to see your head a little bit above the, uh, no, 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 I've seen the ceiling. I need, ah, ah, my, my wonderful friends and brother and sister, captain, judge and reverend missus, reverend, I'm, I'm excited to have you tonight. Please make welcome in your heart as God begins to use these vessels. These are the hosts of this wonderful um, radio program and, um, uh, they are certified marriage uh, assessment facilitators. So they, they've got not just the spiritual credentials, but they also have, you know, the other credentials, you know, the, the, both the educational, psychological, all the credentials that you need tonight is in this house. So plug in with your spirit on full alert. Amen. I'm trusting that the spirit of God will walk through these vessels to bring our marriages to another higher level in the name of Jesus. They're not going to do it on their own. They already know that. They know that they will be doing it by the help of the Holy Spirit. So welcome, Captain Judge. Welcome, Reverend Bosede. God bless you. Uh, these are the Santoses. God bless you. I've known them forever. And I know that the grace of God on their lives they are, is about to bless us. So be open, yield to the Holy Spirit as they lead the the um the ship tonight. God bless you, and I'm handing over to you. Take us all the way as the spirit leads you. God bless. I'll be back. See you later, guys. God bless you. Thank you very much, Pastor um, Agatha. Um, I'm not sure where the the Captain George came from, but I'll accept that. Uh, let's 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 go with Ayokule for now. Thank you so much. God bless you. Um. It is it is a it is a privilege indeed it is a privilege to to be here with you this evening, um, to to share with you uh, not just in time of uh, during the time of prayer but also share with you what the spirit of God says about marriages. Now of course marriages are not just about us alone, um, about our children, about building a family. It's a, it's a much wider institution. Um, than that. So as we go through this period of prayer, I would, you know, would really like that you you key in 
with the with the points, with the prayer points that we're going to be sharing. Now, before going to the prayer points, we're going to talk about a couple of um, um make a couple of points, first of all, you know, is that God used the marriage institution to explain the mystery of our relationship with him. Now let that sink in for a moment. He used that this institution we call marriage to explain our relationship with him. And it is indeed, as the Bible describes it, a mystery. It's something that we just wonder that how 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 can how can one plus one be, be ten? You know, how does that work out? How how what exactly does it mean? And once we understand what the institution of marriage is about, then we understand what our relationship with our father is. So marriage is such a vital institution and it, a vital tool in the hands of God that it's the, like um, my husband just said, it's the only relationship that God could use to explain the mystery between Christ and the church. And that's the only, I mean, especially for those of us who are already married, that that's the way we can actually understand that intimacy and that bond that um, is between Christ and his church. And, and, you know, part of the prayers we're going to be praying tonight, we're going to be touching on this mystery um, uh, that, that God, you know, has used marriage to, um, to explain. And we trust that, you know, as we, as we pray, we get deeper even into our understanding and into our knowledge of this mystery that's uh, that's called marriage. You know, they, there's a, it's a proverb that says that you cannot understand the way of man with uh, a, a woman, but by the grace of God, we, you know, the, by the spirit of God, we will understand our ways as husband and wives in the name of Jesus. Amen, Christ. amen. So as we go into this time of prayer, just to reiterate that we're, we're not just praying for um, our marriages and ourselves, we're also keying into our relationship with our father. So we're going to have a, a um, five prayer points. Um, the first one is going to be praying about our foundation, our foundation, you know, the, 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 um, how am I going to explain it? The foundation of our marriage, which is also equivalent to the foundation of our faith with God. So the first scripture I'll be sharing is Isaiah 28, 16. And it says, therefore, thus says the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, number one, a precious cornerstone, number two, and a sure foundation. It is priced, it mm. is sure, mm. it is solid. Whoever mm. believes will not act hastily. Mm. So that is number one, to have at the back of our minds that what we are going to start praying about, yes, we are praying about our marriages, also with our relationship with God, but we need to ensure that we have everything based upon that tried and sure foundation. Another scripture we're going to um, pray along the lines of the first Corinthians 3, 11, and it says, for no other foundation can anyone um, lay than that which is laid, which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, apologies for the typo there. So this foundation we're talking about is, is laid in Christ Jesus. So it's not just solid, but it is based in Christ Jesus. And the final uh, scripture will be Psalms 104 um, verse 5. And it says, you who laid the foundation of the earth so that it should not be moved forever. Now, what picture do these scriptures paint? This picture paints something that is solid, something that is tried, something that lasts forever you know it 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 is it is not just remember our relationship with our father is not just for as long as we live it is forever so it is so solid and as we go into this uh, uh, time of prayer i would like us to 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 have this at the back of our mind have this of our minds rather have this in our spirit and our first prayer point um what i'm going to do is that i'm going to read um, something akin to a, a declaration, and then I would like you with the prayer, with the uh, scriptures you have uh, are on the screen, and with what I read, 
to 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 pray in the spirit and on the understanding. Remember, we are praying concerning the foundation. And of course, during the prayer, you know, we'd like you to unmute yourself. So first point would be: look, we are proved by the blood of Jesus. Everything lurking in the foundation of our marriages that is not built by Jesus. We uproot everything. Remember, if the found, if our foundation is, also, is not right, we cannot ex expect to be able to stand. So let's pray. Or mute ourselves and pray along those lines. Mark that we uproot by the blood of Jesus everything that is lurking in the foundation of our marriages that is not built by Jesus. We ask that you make you will carry out the search to the deepest of our marriages, deepest part of our foundation, Father. Root out anything, oh God, that is based upon tradition, Lord, that is not based upon you. Anything that is based upon feeling, Lord, that is not based upon you. Or anything, oh God, that is not on you. Lord, root them out in the name of Jesus. I want you to concentrate on that word lurking. You know, something that lurks, it's not something that you can easily see. It's something like a computer virus. It's just hiding there. It's waiting and it's working on the ground. Yes, that book that pray concerning things that are not so obvious to Katani Krata Silikistia. But if we root this out from the Lord, out of the foundations of the marriages in the name of Jesus Christ, we root this out, Father Lord, out of the foundation of our relationship with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father Lord, we desire that that foundation, O oh Lord, of our marriages, O oh God, shall be as you have described, O oh Lord, in Isaiah 28, 16. Lord, in that shall be strife, pray shall be precious. Father Lord, oh Father, we will not act hastily because we are based upon that sure foundation. Thank you, Father Lord, for this foundation which we are enjoying here on earth, Father Lord, shall last forever. Lord, it shall, be, it shall continue, Father Lord, even on the eternity, Father. Nothing, oh God, nothing that is that, that, that is not of you, Father Lord, shall exist. Oh, anything that's lucky, Father Lord. Thank you, God, for you have rooted and you have uprooted, oh Lord, this in, in our marriages, for the foundation of our marriages, in the name of Jesus Christ. Our Father, we bless your holy name. We thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. The second prayer point concerning our foundation, you know, that is, is based upon this, that we ask we invite and submit to the Lord to repair every fault line. You know what a fault mm. line is? When you look at a foundation, it doesn't matter how, how strong. I mean, if, if you can just imagine a concrete slab, you know, a concrete slab that looks so strong and so solid. If it has a fault line, it, fault line is the beginning of a crack. A crack is, 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 is what makes it easy for this very strong thing to fall apart. So our prayer point is that we're asking our Father to repair every fault line um, that that may exist in, in our foundation. Uh, we'll be praying that, Lord, that your the, the, the bedrock of your love 
that steadfast and immovable, oh, uh, Father Lord, love that you have concerning us, those steadfast and immovable, immovable words of God in your scripture, Father Lord, mm -hmm. shall mend any fault lines that we may or may not see in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, let us pray. Omit yourselves and pray. Oh, I'd like us to picture that concrete slab and picture that fault line and, 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 and draw, uh, 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 you know, relate it to our lives, our marriages. What are those areas in our lives that we know are fault lines? What are those areas in our lives that we may not even know are fault lines? Let's invite our Father to complement this fault line. in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Repair it, you know. I mean, those who may be in the building industry, you know, there are ways in which you can repair a fault line, or you can just cover it with a little bit of plaster, uh, a cement, or whatever plaster you want to use that may mask it, but mm -hmm. eventually it will continue to spread. Mm -hmm. Let yeah. us pray that we will not just cover, just like in the old days, covering sins rather than dealing with the sins from the root as the blood of the lamb has done in our lives. So let us equate that to our lives, that we will not use the blood of of, of, of animals and goats and, and cows or whatever to mask those fault lines in our marriages, but the blood of the lamb, the lamb of God to come and cover this sin and, and, and to uproot these things rather. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, thank you, Father God, for cover this for mind. Lord, all those all those issues that are that are lurking underneath the surface, Father. We thank you, King of Glory, that you have mended, you have fixed for me in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. And finally. Finally, we'll consider our foundation. Um, you know, we do no wrong in our marriages because our hearts are established on his truth and we belong to him. Think of that for a moment. We do no wrong because our hearts are established in him. It is not about our effort. It's not about, as we used to say, Chandra. It's not about how tough or how hard you try. It is about our lining aligning our words, aligning our thoughts with the word of God. When we have that sorted out, we naturally flow into what we ought to do. We naturally flow into the lives that we ought to live. So let us pray concerning that, that even as these are foundations are, are, are established, not only those issues we've prayed about, but also our hearts, are aligned with the word of God, that naturally we will always, always, we will always, you know, be, 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 be guided. We will always be, be, be act, you know, we must act in the way that the Lord has sent us out to do. So let us pray concerning that. Just one more minute. Thank you, for the Lord. But we do no wrong in our marriages because our hearts are established on your truth. We belong to you. Father, we give you all the praise. Lord, we give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Yes, praise the Lord. Next, we're going Amen. to be praying about our covenant, the covenant of marriage. We're going to be revisiting uh, the covenant that um, 
it's, it's called marriage. Uh, the Bible says in Genesis 2.24 that a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. But before we get to that scripture in the preceding verses, this was when um, God presented Eve to um, Adam. And, you know, I love the way that the New Living Translation puts it. It was kind of like, eh, hey, now we're talking this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, you know, and we will call her woman. So that's that it 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 is that removing of the of the um of the rib of the man to create the woman. That is exactly where the infusion of that or uh, 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 of that oneness. That's where it comes from. And then when we now fast forward to um when Jesus Christ uh when Jesus Christ uh, was crucified the bible says the bible says that you know that one of these uh one of the soldiers uh pierced his side and from out of his side flowed blood and water and here uh, again in uh, Matthew Matthew 9, 19 uh, verses uh, 4 to 5 where it's been reiterated of how the the two the man and the woman will they will leave their 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 um parents and the two of them will join together and become one flesh that is you know from the genesis account that is for you know like a foreshadow of what happened when that soldier pierced the side of jesus christ and you know where that is out of where we came from because it is that is the blood that's redeemed us the blood that or that's where we received our forgiveness and you know and the blood is always a mark of a of any covenant we as uh, nigerians we know the traditional uh thing about the first night of the marriage where you know uh, the blood marks the covenant of that marriage and it's still the same thing that we're talking about here and the water you know is is where where we're now where we're now you know completely washed our sins are washed and so it, it's you know this is just a beautiful picture even as we now go into ephesians 5 where it talks about the man or you know first of all the woman submitting to the to the man because and they this is the mystery that we were talking about and the man washing his wife with the water of the word presenting her blameless presenting her without spot or wrinkle so let's begin to pray and ask the father that the bond between us and our spouses, that that bond will never be broken in the name of Jesus, okay. that we will truly become one, truly become bone of our bone, of, of each other's bones and flesh of each other, of other's flesh. Begin to, you know, I, I don't want you to pray, you know, without a, 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 an image on your heart. See how the Father Himself is fusing you and your spouse as one. The same way that we, as as uh, um, born again Christians, were removed from the side of Christ by the by the with the evidence of the blood and the water. That the same way that we and our and our spouses that that we are merged together as one. I, you know, there's there's this saying, you know, back in 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 Nigeria where they say as long as um um the soap stays on the on the leaf, it eventually uh, 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 that the leaf eventually becomes the soap. Mm. You know, so the same way as for as long as we are you know together as a couple, that we we will so understand each other that you know <laughs> like, like they say also finishing each other's sentences so father in the name of jesus christ we thank you oh lord god that we have truly become one flesh 
in the name of Jesus Christ, that nothing in the name of Jesus Christ will separate us. Every plan of the enemy, even to come to put asunder, Father, it shall not come to pass. The Bible says what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus Christ that our union, our bond, Father, Lord God Almighty, is, is, is getting stronger and stronger every day in the name of Jesus Christ. We are growing stronger in the point of unity in the name of Jesus the Bible said that both of them were naked and they were not ashamed. Father, we thank you between us and our spouses, no secrets in the name of Jesus. We are vulnerable with each other in the name of Jesus Christ. The enemy will not sow any seed of secrecy between us in the name of Jesus. We give no rules. We give no rules in the name of Jesus. We are humiliated and not ashamed with each other in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, the name of Jesus Christ continues to increase in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, the, the, on, the, on the altar of our Lord continues to burn with the we have shed one another in the name of the Oh, <laughs> 
We watch, Lord God Almighty, in, in, in the liberty and the freedom that your spirit supplies in now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our next prayer point uh, is actually going to be more of yeah, it's a prayer point, but I would like us to to use it as a as a as a scripture of of meditation, you know, mm -hmm. as we read through the scripture to 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 dig very deep into our marriages and and compare what we are reading with what our lives reflect today. It is mm -hmm. it is a scripture that you've heard one million times. Um, you know it backwards and all that. Uh, one of the things I like doing is reading a familiar scripture in a completely different version um, to what I'm used to, because that causes you to listen again to what it's saying. You know, avoid this thing that psychologists call um, repetitive cognitive failure. In other words, like becomes white noise. So it's Ephesians chapter 5, 21 to 23. And I'm going to read it in the God's Word version. Oh, no. And um, as you know, it is it's, it's, it's about an advice to wives and husbands. <laughs> so I'm going to read it slowly. I'm not going to rush through. I want, as you hear those words, look at your marriages. Just delve deep into your marriages and compare what you are reading with what or what you are reading and hearing with what you are experiencing in your marriage, and begin to lay every single point. You know, you know, even into the hands of our Father, because he is the one who is the restorer. Those areas that we need improvement, we lay it in his hands. Those areas that are, we, are completely, we have completely failed or whatever, we lay it in his hands. Because remember, the word of God is our standard, is our foundation, mm -hmm. is what we have a covenant with, and it is our, is our operations manual, if you can put it that way. So from verse 21, Place yourselves under each other's authority out mm. of respect for Christ. Mm. Place yourselves under each other's authority out of respect for Christ. Christ is the, is the focus here. Wives, place yourselves under your husband's authority as you have placed yourself under the Lord's authority. Place yourselves under your husband's authority as you have placed yourselves under the Lord's authority. You cannot say, for instance, that look, okay, yes, I'm following God. I, you know, I I I I, you know, God is my authority, and then you 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 forget the other part. The scripture is is, is taken as a as a whole, as a piece. Verse 23: the husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church. It is his body, and he is its savior. The husband is the head of the wife. As Christ is the head of the church, what does Christ do? We're going to read, how does Christ manage the church? If I may use that term. We're going to read it and we're going to find out very shortly. As the church is under Christ's authority, so wives are under their husband's authority in everything. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. I'll just pause here. Remember, I said this is more of a meditative prayer point. Anything the Bible gives instruction for, you know that is not something, it's usually not something that comes naturally. The Bible won't say, uh, you know, you must, you must do something that naturally will make you happy because, you know, our Father knows that there are certain things in our lives that we may not even want to do, but they are good for us to, go, to, you know, to, to, to engage in and to do. So husband loves your wife, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. He did this to make the church holy by cleansing it, washing it, using water along with spoken words. Husbands, are we doing this to our wives? Then he could present it to himself as a glorious church, 
picture your wife be coming to you as a glorious wife, if I can put it that way, mm. without mm. any stain or wrinkle, mm. without any stain or wrinkle, holy and without fault. Mm. Verse 28, so husbands must love their wives as they love their own bodies. A man who loves his wife loves himself. Wow. A <laughs> man who loves his wife loves himself. Mm. Wives and husbands, we are, we are still reading. We are not through yet. Compare what we are reading now with what we are going through in our marriages. Mm. There is no way we can make it without following these words. This is not us. This is not some professor of analytical calculus saying this. This is the word of God. No one ever hated his own body. Instead, he feeds and takes care of it as Christ takes care of the church. We are parts of his body. That is why a man will leave his father and mother and be united with his wife. And the two will be one. This is a great mystery. Wow. It's a mystery. We don't understand. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. But it makes sense because it is there in the word of God. But every husband must love his wife as he loves himself, and wives should respect their husband. So everything in this in this in this uh, chapter, all the this uh, scripture we've just read, uh, uh, summarized in verse 20, uh, 33. But every husband must love his wife as he loves himself, and wives should respect their husbands. So let us pray for one minute. I did say it's a meditative uh, a scripture. Um, for us to contemplate, you know, prayerfully, where are we with this scripture? You know, so Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. we want to thank you, God, for your for your instructions, oh God, in Ephesians 5, 21 to 20 to 33. Lord, we know that no form of marriage counseling, no form of marriage advice, nothing, Lord, can compare with your words. And mm -hmm. Father, we establish right now this evening for each, each couple represented here. And perhaps there might be those who are not married, who are looking forward to getting married. Lord, we establish in their lives that as husbands, Lord, they love their wives, Lord, as, you, as they love themselves. Lord, and the wives will respect their husbands even Ah, as they respect their father. Father, we thank you, God, for your formula never fails. We give you all the praise and all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Next, we're going to be praying about love. It's, I, I just smiled when I saw um, Pastor Agatha's post. Um, I think she started posting it yesterday that um, we the the price we have to pay or something like that is is agape yes. love. <laughs> or, yeah, is agape love, and you know this this is one of the uh, prayer points <laughs> that we had already earmarked to be praying today. So we're just going to look at First uh, Corinthians thirteen four to eight. The Bible tells us that God is love. So what we want to do is to begin to establish ourselves in the nature of love. Well, not begin because we're all children of God. So we're already, we've already been established, but to even more so establish ourselves in the nature of God, which is love. So let's begin to pray that, let's make this as a declaration. I am patient. I am, patient, I am kind. I am kind. I am not jealous I'm or boastful or proud or rude. Or rude. I do not demand, do not demand my, own way. my own way. I am not irritable. Not irritable. I keep no record, I keep of, being no record of being wrong. I do not rejoice, I do at, not injustice, rejoice at injustice. But I rejoice whenever, I rejoice the, truth whenever the truth wins. I never give up. I never, I give up. never lose faith. I never lose faith. I'm always hopeful. I'm always I hopeful. endure through every and I circumstance. Through every circumstance. In the name in of, the Jesus. Name of Jesus Christ. Attributes in this 
O ranta basın tali koda da bana basın da zıbı sedekesi. O ranta bana basın da sedekesi de krama basın da zıbı sedekesi. O ranta basın da krama basın da zıbı sedekesi. O ranta basın da krama basın da zıbı sedekesi. O ranta basın da krama basın da zıbı sedekesi. O ranta basın da krama basın da zıbı sedekesi. O ranta basın da krama basın da zıbı sedekesi. O ranta basın da krama basın da zıbı sedekesi. so that
you are Father, you are in us. We are in you, Lord God. And so, Lord, we know that we have been raised, oh Lord God, even in love, the more, Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So this is uh this was one prayer point that the Lord gave us that you know kind of even baffled us, but we we want to trust God that this is ad- going to address you know what somebody um has been believing God for. And the way the Lord placed it on our hearts was that there, there will be no Ishmael project. No, Ishmael, we all know the story of Ishmael, how um, after some time when God had already given the promise that um, um, Abraham was going to have a child, but it was he was delaying. But yes, it was in their culture. It was OK in their culture for um, uh, for uh, Sarah to have given uh, her handmaid to her husband to bear a child for her. It was well in their culture, but today we're still suffering the consequence of that arrangement. So let's Mm -hmm. begin to pray that we will not hurry ahead of God, no matter what the situation is. God has given us the promise. We will stick with the promise. We will stick with the promise. We will not go ahead of God but we will allow God to have his way, have his will, and and we will work according to the timing of God. We will not have our own agenda and begin to, you know, begin to permutate and, you know, just make, try and make things happen outside of the timing of God. Yes, and also to add that, for adventure, there might be certain things that you might look back and say, okay, look, yes, we're saying here we don't we don't want to get into Ishmael projects, but okay, look, we've made this mistake. We now have this Ishmael. What do we do? You know, nothing, nothing in this world, nothing in this world is impossible. So as we go into this time of prayer, I, you know, I, I we'd like you to, um, as we pray all prayer along, you know, to look at those areas of our lives that may be Ishmael's, those areas of our lives that we've brought into the fold that we surely shouldn't. That is probably impossible, as it were, to remove them now. But even that thing that is an Ishmael, that may be an Ishmael in our lives, is turned into good. It is nothing that our Father cannot cannot do. So let's pray now in the Spirit that peradventure there may be things that are Ishmael's in our lives. They are turned into good in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Name of Jesus, and came to put this idea into her head about what God did not ordain, what God did not, what God did not, uh, 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 um, uh, 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 u
Thank you, Father Lord, for we submit to one another. Thank you, Father Lord, as husbands that we love our, our wives, Father, even as ourselves. Thank you, Father, for we, the for the wives, Father, Lord, that they will honor their husbands. Lord, they 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 give. Lord, even even as they even as they lay their lives, oh, even as they lay their lives, Father Lord, for you, oh Lord. Thank you, Father Lord. For you have done that which you have promised, even in the lives of the of these couples, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father Lord, for we exhibit, oh God, all the attributes that we have prayed concerning love in our lives as individuals, Father Lord, and in our marriages. And thank you, Father Lord, for we will not run ahead of you. Lord, mm. we will stick to that timing, oh God, that you have. No Ishmael projects in our life. And for adventure, there might have been, Father Lord, we thank you, God, for you are able to restore that which may have gone wrong in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, mm. we thank you, oh God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Mm -hmm. And before we go, we just want to share, um, Pastor Agatha mentioned earlier on about the marriage experience. It's a radio program we, we host every week. We've been doing it now for just over a year, right? Uh, we're at episode 10 of season two. Um, uh, it is obviously it's free. Uh, it's online. Um, Heart Songs um, Live Radio. For those who are familiar with it, we it, they are held at um, 7 p.m. every Monday and repeated on uh, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. as well, it's just for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, for those who have never listened to them, all the episodes of both seasons are available at our YouTube channel, At My Experience, um, Experience of obviously without the E, and also available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify as well. Please avail yourselves of this opportunity. Um, we've talked about the marriage. We've talked about the family. And we're talking right now about something very interesting, which um, it's a difficult topic for most people to talk about. But um, we won't let the cat out of the bag. Go for yourselves and listen to. Uh, you've missed today. Those who've missed today, um, there's a... Oh, today's Wednesday, excuse me. So, yes, you can get it on up on um, uh, YouTube. Uh uh, episode season two, episode ten. So thank you very much. God bless you all, and oh, back to you, Pastor Agatha. Oh wow! Well, thank you so much. Can we just thank the Lord for our brother and our sister, Captain and Mrs. Santos? God bless you for coming tonight. We appreciate you. Hallelujah! Anybody out there who is willing to bless the name of the Lord on their behalf and on the, and to pray about the work that God has for them to do. Father, we just thank you for your son and your daughter as they have yielded themselves as vessels of honor to bring glory and honor to the institution that you so love. The Bible says marriage is honorable in all. Under all circumstances, marriage is honorable. And we want to thank you that your unction on the lives of your son and daughter continues to go on the increase in the name of Jesus. And indeed, 
you would say to them, well done, good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for blessing us tonight. And before you go, just to quickly remind us that all these sessions are recorded. Avail yourself, um, the resource. Um, it will be available probably in the next 24 hours on our YouTube channel, but the previous months are already there. Please, please make use of the resources. Allow God to use those resources to bless your marriages. Thank you so much. And let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit remains with us now forevermore. Amen. 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 Surely goodness and mercy Amen. shall follow us Amen. all the all days, days of our lives. Life. We will dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. ever. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The Egyptians Amen. that your marriage has seen today.